Hi everybody, welcome to this month's Back in Time activity. I just want to remind you, if you haven't had a chance to stop by the museum and pick up a packet yet, we're going to be using this for the activity today and we still have a bunch, so be sure to drop by the museum and pick one up if you haven't yet. Um, we are starting next week. We're going to be open from 10 to 3, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then also on the second Saturday of each month. And I'm really excited for the next second Saturday. It's coming up pretty quickly. It will be on March 13th. I have the flyer here for you to look at. Um, and because we're going to kind of continue what we're talking about today, talking about women's right and suffrage and, and the work women do to make their communities better places. And I'm especially excited and honored that we're going to have Karina Andalyn Brown come. She is a woman that lives here in our valley and has worked for a long time, very active politically to um, make things better for the women in our community um, and she also was one of the leaders for the cash celebration for suffrage organization and um, has even ran for political op office for um, congress and also for utah's lieutenant governor and so it's really neat that she's going to be able to come and give a presentation and so um, that's really exciting we'll also have a drop-in art activity that day and we have two exhibits. Um, one is the historic Hiram Women exhibit that's been here at the museum for a while. It will close out in March. That will be the last month you can come and see it. And then Karina is also bringing the Cash Celebration for Suffrage exhibit, um, which is really great that shows, um, that teaches about um, women's suffrage. And so we're gonna be talking about suffrage today. That's kind of a new vocabulary word if you don't know what that means. It basically just means the right to vote. So when you're saying women's suffrage, that means giving women the right to vote because that is not something that has always been allowed. And so we're gonna learn about that today. Um, so I'm gonna start by introducing you to Martha Hughes Cannon. This is a picture of her here. She was born in Wales in 1857, so a long time ago. And Wales is a little country in Europe, um, close to England, and her family was there. And when she was just five years old, they immigrated here to what it was, the Utah Territory. It wasn't a state yet. And they, during their travel across the plains, which was a very uh, difficult journey, both her father and a baby sister died. And that really affected Maddie a lot, of course, as it would. And, um, but the impact it had on her made her have this very strong desire to be a doctor. And that was really huge then because most um, women would not even go, have gone, had the opportunity to go to college, let alone become a doctor. And so, um, but she was really very, a very smart woman and very independent and very driven. And so um, when she was 16 years old, she enrolled in the University of Deseret, which is still around. Today we call it the University of Utah. Go Utes, I went there. Um, she went there to, and she earned a chemistry degree um, as part of her pre-med requirements. And while she was there um, doing her study, she also was working in order to make money to go to medical school. There wasn't a medical school in Utah at the time. And so she worked as a typesetter. And so, um, and that was setting up numbers and letters um, to print, um, because we didn't have like awesome computer printers like we now do now. They had to set out and, and um, that's, that's something we should talk about at another activity is, as typesetting, that would be really fun. Anyway, um, so she worked as a typesetter for both the Deseret News, which is a big newspaper that still exists in Salt Lake City, and also um, the Women's Exponent, which was very involved with a lot of social and sanitation and different issues going on um, in the late 1800s. And so she became really kind of immersed in this world of women's rights at that time and suffrage and those sorts of things. Um, so this is a picture, this one is a picture of her um, in 1880 when she earned her medical degree at the age of 23 years old from the University of Michigan. Now while she was in the Eastern United States, she also went to the University of Pennsylvania and earned a pharmaceuticals degree in 1882. She was the only woman in her whole class that earned that. And simultaneously, because she was such a good speaker or orator, she also got a degree from the uh, school in Philadelphia. So by the time she was 25 years old, 
she had four different degrees and one of them was being a doctor. So that's, I think that's really pretty amazing, especially considering, you know, this was a time period when women couldn't vote and they didn't, um, a lot of them weren't even allowed to go to school or there were a lot of jobs women were not allowed to do. So that's really amazing um, that she achieved those things. In 1882, so after she um, finished up with her pharmaceutical degree, she came back and returned to Salt Lake City to set up a private medical practice, and she also became the resident physician at the Deseret Hospital. Um, and she got married in 1884 secretly to Angus Cannon uh, because she was the fourth of his six polygamous wives. So I'm going to tell you about polygamy really quick for just a minute so you can understand some of this. So this was a practice that a lot of people in Utah um, engaged in yeah, during this time period, and it's basically just where one man has more than one wife. And um, most people, especially people outside of Utah, were very much against that. And so we'll talk about that in a minute. So she was the four of um, Angus Cannon's six wives, and he was a very prominent, wealthy um, leader in their church. And so um, they did... Um, you know, they, they did pretty well for themselves. Um, however, as polygamy per prosecutions intensified, and so people who were practicing polygamy were put in jail, and there was laws and a lot of um, different things going on this time. So she actually, and she had had, had a baby by then, a couple years, within two years of getting married, they had their her first baby, which is a daughter named Elizabeth. So her and Elizabeth actually moved to England in 1886, um, lived and lived in exile for a year before they returned to Utah in 1888. And she did that partially so her husband wouldn't get in trouble, but she also did that um, because as a doctor, a big part of what she did is she helped women, pregnant women, and helped people with their infants and deliver babies and stuff like that. And a lot of these women were polygamous women. And so she went to England so she wouldn't have to testify against those women. Um, when she returned to Utah in 1888, she resumed her medical practice and she also started a nursing school. And then within a couple more years, at the age of 33, she gave birth to her second child, which was a son named James. So we're gonna go on a little um, side note here, just away from Maddie. So women in Utah, just so you know this, um, were the very first in our country to have the right to vote. Now technically Wyoming passed legislation first that gave their women the right to vote first, but there was an election in Utah first that women voted in. And so that's why even though technically the legislation in Wyoming was first, the actual first women to physically vote were here in our state of Utah. Um, now that law passed, the, the law that gave women the right to vote in Utah passed in 1870. Um, but due to anti-polygamy, polygamy legislation passed seven years later, most of those women then lost their right to vote. Um, so, I get, so going back now to Maddie, around the time of James's birth, so she had had the right to vote, but then had lost it because she was a polygamous wife. Um, so she, and, um, she became very involved in the fight to regain voting rights or suffrage um, for women in Utah. In 1889, she delivered a very important speech um, for the Utah Women's Suffrage Association and said all persons should have the same legal right to be equal of every other. She was also a featured speaker at the Chicago's World Expo in 1893 and a Chicago newspaper reported that Mrs. Dr. Martha Hughes Cannon is considered one of the brightest exponents of women's cause in the United States. So she worked for several years and um, one of her, one thing she always advocated or said often was that all men and women are created free and equal. So when Utah gained statehood, finally, it was a territory for a very long time. It took a really long time for Utah to get statehood. And, and a big part of that was because of polygamy. Um, in 1896, um, Utah gained statehood. And because it was a state election at that time, women were finally allowed to vote and also to run for office. And so she decided to run for the state Senate. And there were five at-large seats and she ran. And what's really interesting is that her husband also ran um, for one of those seats on a different, they were on different parties. And, um, and 
Maddie won and her husband lost. And so it's really interesting because um, it was, you know, it was a historic moment. So for the whole, in our whole nation's history, um, Martha Hughes Cannon is the first female to ever serve in a state senate um, in the very first year that they were, that Utah became a state even. And, um, but what the media, what the newspapers loved to talk about was that she beat her husband to do it. So I think that's really interesting. This is a picture of her with the Utah State Senate in 1897. And so this is her right here on the left. You notice there are two other women in this picture, but those are secretaries. Um, because, you know, can you imagine all the legislation and bills and doing all this stuff without computers? Everything had to be handwritten out. Um, so she served in the Utah State Senate from 1896 to 1900, and she continued to practice medicine during that time. Um, and I, I'm going to read through some of the successful bills or laws that she wrote, um, because they really they, they revolutionized public health care and sanitation in Utah at a time when you know, these things were becoming very important. People were becoming more aware of the need for sanitation and regulations on things like this. So um, she sponsored a pure food law and also a law that regulated working conditions for women and girls. She spearheaded funding for the education of speech and hearing impaired students. And she also helped establish Utah's first state board of health. Um, another thing she did while she was a state senator is she gave birth to her third child here, Gwendolyn, at the age of 42. I think it's really amazing um, that Maddie used her voice as a politician to improve the things she knew about, things that she, she saw and she witnessed and she experienced in her own personal life and her professional life, both as a mother and as a doctor. Um, and she also was able to strike a balance between that today is just as hard for women today between um, work and motherhood. Um, and so I just want to end my little talk about Maddie with a quote she gave. She said, let us not waste our talents in the cauldron of modern nothingness, but strive to become women of intellect and endeavor to do some little good while we live in this protracted gleam called life. And so um, I hope that we can all really um, work hard to, to do what we know best to help make society better. So um, if you have more questions or want to come talk to me more about this, I would love to have you come to the museum. So now we're going to do a fun little art activity. We are going to make germs. <laughs> Isn't this fun? So in your packet, you have a piece of watercolor paper. And you also have some watercolors and a brush and a straw and a little array of googly eyes. And so what you're going to do, and this is what I found to work best, you'll need a little cup of water and a little napkin. And I actually just use my straw. If you put your straw in, that's almost the best way to make these wet. I'll just do some glue. You just drop a little bit of, let's do some orange too. Just drop a little bit of water on them and they actually, um, mix up really fast. And then what you do, you mix it up, you get some color and you put it on the paper. And one thing I noticed after doing that one, well, let me show you. And then you're gonna blow on it while it, so you wanna have quite a bit of water on it. And sometimes it spreads out pretty well. If it doesn't, I even sometimes on some of these just kind of, it's like you're giving them a pathway. So if you kind of pull it out from the center a little and then blow, see it kind of helps it go out a little bit. Can you drop my brush? Okay, so let's try an orange one now. And you can do as many as you want. You can use as many colors. I did not try mixing these colors, so I don't know if that works. Like if you want a purple one, you can try it. Let me know how it works.
low. Anyway, okay, so you do this and then let it dry. So this is one I've let dry and I've already put some eyes. Now you have a whole bunch of googly eyes in your packet that you can use and just stick them on. Or like me, I wanted to have lots of eyes on mine. And so all I did was I just got a little scrap piece of paper and a marker and it's as simple as drawing a dot and a circle around it. And you can play with them. That's a pretty big one, you see there. Some of them I kind of did a double one. You kind of do an M and then do it the other way. Awesome. Pupils in the middle, like that. And then you just cut them up. And then I just glued them down. And then you have little germs. One thing that I did, and, and you can leave it like that, is I just got a just a black pen. Clean up my masker. And I made some of them kind of have some fun little squigglies. So I just did a squiggle and a little thing on the bottom. Put this one in. It just kind of makes them just look a little more silly. So that's your germ activity. And then you have your own little watercolor palette that you can color whatever you want with afterwards. So I hope that you enjoy making a germ photo and that you're grateful that we have laws now that make it so that maybe when you go to the doctor, they can't use, you know, the same stuff on you they used on other people or, you know, all kinds of legislation laws with sanitation and things like that. Um, that things like the State Board of Health, which Maddie Cannon established, make sure that we all stay safe and healthy, especially when there's stuff like a pandemic going on. So anyway, I hope to see you guys on the 13th. If you're able to come, it's going to be a really great event. I'm super excited about it. We have a whole nother art project to do. And again, um, we have Karina coming and that's going to be an amazing um, presentation. And then on our next back in time, we have our packets ready for those too. And it involves dirt. It's pretty exciting. So you can come and get those whenever you want. So I hope you have a good day and we'll see you later.